Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of the Unlaced Podcast. If you are new here, please give us a like and subscribe. It's how we grow. And if you have come back, as I always say, thank you so much. The heartbeat of the podcast. I'm going to pause you guys right there, though. Please go give us a review on Spotify. Give us five stars if you're feeling kind. It's great for the page. It'll get more people listening. And obviously, for you guys coming back, we appreciate your support and helping us expand the show. Um got a great guest on today, a bloke I met a few weeks ago and we hit it off like a house on fire. He's a ripping fella. Um, I've been watching him play for, for quite a few years as he used to play for my former team, St Kilda, and then he moved over to the, the Western Bulldogs, but it's none other than uh, Joshy Bruce, mate. How are you, mate? Yes, I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, man, we did hit it off, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, man, my old man. Your birthday, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, he's now my old man. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's gonna, he'll be watching this with his eyes. He won't blink through this episode. <laughs> he absolutely loves you. No, he's a legend. And uh, yeah, that was a fun night a few weeks ago. And uh, it was your 30th, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Are you, yeah. you what are you? Thir- oh, I just turned 31. Yeah, 31. Last Fuck. week. So, mate, it's, uh, yeah. how's, the, how's the body coping at 31 uh, now these days? Yeah, just, not great. <laughs> not yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, I wake up feeling pretty stiff. Yeah. Something about being in the cold weather too, you know, your knees get sore. And, um, but yeah, no, all good, all good. I, I thought uh, when I turned 30, I was like, geez, I'm, I'm feeling old. And mm. then when I turned 31, I was like, well, I'm the start of a new decade now. So <laughs> I've, got, I've got 10 years till I'm 40, so yeah. I feel young again. So. Oh, that's a good way. Yeah, well, everyone yeah. says uh, 30s and new 20s and so forth. But um, for those that don't know what's been going on with you of late, you've just got back into um, the rip of things on the footy field, but you're you hurt your ribs pretty badly, and I presume even though you're playing now, that they still bloody hurt because everyone who talks about getting rib injuries, that always talk about the excruciating pain from like breathing, coughing, sneezing. Um, so how's that? How's that feeling? Ah, uh, yeah, pretty much everything is. It was sore. I mean, I uh, there's vision in from the Adelaide Oval. I got sort of got sandwiched between two guys. Um, I can't remember who came from one side, but Finlayson was on the other side and all the force just went through my rib cage, oh. snapped my sternum, snapped four ribs, um, <clears throat> and then sort of knocked Finlayson over. Um, and yeah, went straight into like a shock pretty much. And it was pretty wild. Like, um, ended up in hospital for a week after that. And it's been, it's only been eight weeks really. So eight weeks back playing and still, um. Yeah. Is that it's, a quick turnaround though for I think ribs? It's pretty, yeah, I think it is pretty for quick. For a physical sport like AFL. Well, they were talking about having surgery and stuff straight away and like rewiring it all and putting it all back together and stuff. They ended up opting away from that, um, which would have been, you know, almost a season ending yeah. injury. So um, it's just one of those ones. I'm wearing a guard at the moment, so it's fine getting through. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure if you punch me straight in the head, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, say the wrong thing, mate, yeah. you know, over the table. Exactly. No, one thing I always attest to you, and you've you've had a bloody resilient career, um, if you look at your journey, and obviously I watched it much more closely when you're out the Saints, because I watch the Saints every week, but it, it's definitely one to be admired, um, and particularly you've had some pretty serious injuries throughout um, the sport as well, which I'm sure have been some testing times, but you just mentioned your age being 31 being out and in and out of the side with injuries and so forth. Have you gotten better coping with that sort of as a human being? Because I imagine when you're younger, you just want to play every week. Even now you probably want to play every week, but there's a maybe a coping mechanism that gets used to some of the rough times. Yeah, absolutely. Sense. I think um, it's an interesting one. Like when I was younger and I was playing footy, um, you know, whether I'd have a good game or whether I'd have a bad game, that would dictate my mood during the week. And I yeah. felt like that would dictate me as a person. So it'd be like – Oh, if I had a good game of footy, that means I'm a, better, I'm a good bloke. <laughs> or if I had a shit game of footy, it means I'm a shit bloke, you know? Like, and that just, it's sort of when you're younger, it's sort of entwined as yeah. into your worth as a person. Whereas I did a lot of work with Emma Murray, who is a sports psych, and just sort of separated that side of it and said, well, you know, Josh Bruce, the person is different to Josh Bruce, the football player. Mm. And whether or not, you know, I have a good game or a bad game, it doesn't change my worth as a person. So, you know, obviously whether or not I kick 10 in a game or whether I have a game like I did last Friday night and get a bunch kicked on me <laughs> by Charlie Dixon, um, you know, it doesn't change who I am. So, and they, the, the best levelling thing for me is just coming home to my kids. Like, yeah. They couldn't give a shit. Like, yeah. They just, I'm their dad. They don't care whether I've played or not. You know, they're like... They saw me heaps on the on Friday night on TV. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, for, wasn't, wasn't yeah. for the good reasons, but I don't know. Yeah. But I saw you on TV, Dad. I was like, yeah, sweet. So. I've never actually asked this before, and I hope you don't mind me asking it because uh, you've been pretty open about it since you've come in. But I'm, I do want to go into sort of the change-up of your positioning and stuff this year. But obviously coming back um, from an injury and then 
sort of that first quarter was it was a tough sort of quarter for, for the dogs in itself. And then obviously Charlie Dixon kicked a couple on you and so forth. Like just how do you kind of on the field, is that something you're overthinking? Like just trying to get an actual on field mentality of like, fuck, this is, this is not what you want to happen. <laughs> yeah. How do you get out of it? Yeah. Well, it's a tough one because the first five weeks of the season, I was going pretty well. I was a yeah. defender. I was playing some good footy. Um, obviously had a game in the VFL and then came straight back in and the annoying part about the first quarter was that the first one was an intercept mark that I dropped that he ended up crumbing and kicking a goal. The next one was a ground ball that I fumbled, mm. which he ended up getting me holding the ball. So if I had have won those two contests, different game. it could have been a different game. So, yeah. And then sort of, because I'm still learning the position as well, I went into a bit of like fight or flight and I was sort of like eyes are like bugging out, yeah. you know, and I've, I've got tools to try and mentally reset, but it was bloody hard, like Friday night footy. Yeah. Like the world's looking at you. And Port, like, Port Adelaide aren't really the most forgiving team at the moment either. Yeah. So, so they're on, on another day, it might have been. Yeah, they're on an absolute roll. So, mm. um, yeah, it's one of those ones. I mean, it's even though I'm 31, you're not immune to your brain going into, you know, fight or flight or like safety mode and, you know, self preservation mode. And um, it can be really challenging to get out of that. Yeah. 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 I appreciate you sharing that. Cause that's not easy. We've never, I've never asked anyone that. Cause I'm like, that's a bit of a sensitive topic. Like when you're in the shit on the field, cause we've all been there. Like I'm like, I've been on the sock field sometimes. I'm like, sometimes I felt like the greatest player on earth. And sometimes like, oh, I would love to get off this pitch. Yeah. Do you know crazy. what I mean? Yeah, it's like, fucked. like, how do you have that? I got jump? into the third quarter or, or like, well, pretty much in, at the end of the game, I just wanted the fucking ground to swallow me up. Yeah, like, yeah. That's, like, and that's what sport can do And it's sometimes. funny, you can look at your team out and you can see their eyes are like glazed over. They're not mm. really focusing. They're sort of just like passing out a little bit. Yeah. That's when you sort of know, like if your teammate's having a bad run. So, um, but yeah, it's just one of those runs, man. It's just a game and, you know, obviously got a few death threats on the, on the Instagram. Did so you really? Thanks, guys. Fuck <laughs> me. That's insane, <laughs> isn't it? That stuff like, yeah, mate, I was, I had a thought about, I went on my social media today and it was like, it literally, like, the first three posts were just of, like, mass killings or, like, a bus crash in Newcastle. And I'm yeah. like, fuck me, man. So this sad, man. is a dangerous place at times. But, yeah, we don't uh, we don't stand for that shit. No, um, I, mean, it's, I mean, it's interesting. Like, you know, people obviously heavily invested in yeah. the uh, team. And, um, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. Know, it's, it's part what can of, you do? Well, yeah, there's... There's got to be things in place, though, I think, for some of that. And we've seen it a few times this year, even with your teammate, Jamal Hugo Hagen and stuff like, mm. just other other sides of it from death threats to racism. It's it's people like, this is a big part of why we started this, humanizing athletes. Because mm. as you said, Josh, Bruce, the human and AFL player are two different things. Yeah, exactly right. You know, so I'm like, you know, yeah, I had a shit game, I had a shit performance. You know, I accept that, but, you know, it doesn't make me a shit person. Nah, no, no. You, don't, don't, you don't need people to fucking send your messages like that. So no. it can be tough, but, you know, that's one, it's just one of those weeks so you don't turn your phone on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good on you for sharing, mate. <clears throat> but you're, lucky, you're lucky you got me in here because <laughs> yeah. I wasn't on Instagram yeah. this no, week. <laughs> well, I was thinking, I was like, fuck, is he going to want to come on? <laughs> not just for, not because I, I didn't think you were like, individually, I, would, I didn't really look at it that way. It's just like, it's been a, been a run of a tough few weeks. So, yeah. Um, yeah. but on a, on a lighter note, we actually um, come from a bit of a similar part of town, even though I am a Melbourne boy. I spent, a few years in what I term a tough part of the world to live, but you might love it in Canberra. <laughs> um, but you are a Canberra boy. Yes. So pretty unique because Canberra AFL, it's it's somewhat popular, but it is rugby league orientated. So how did you get into the footy side of things living living there? Yeah, massively, massively rugby orientated. So um, I'm the youngest of four boys. So I've got a stepfather who was from Victoria and he had two sons, uh, Luke and Tom. And they started playing footy and they're 10 years older than me. So me and my brother Aaron and my mum got with him, um, just started playing footy just because mm. that's what they did. So, um, yeah, we started playing footy from the age of six at the local club, Eastlake, Eastlake Demons, the Mighty D's. My brother still still plays there. Um, and, yeah, just going through school, you know, everyone played rugby. I used to get bullied at school almost, like ragged out, flat out about playing, you know, I can't say it on here, but, you know, <laughs> something that rhymes with hay, <laughs> FL, oh, no. you know, aerial ping yeah, pong. They, they really hammer it Oh, there, mate, I don't flat get out. Like I would get rinsed for playing it, you know, from these sort of rugby jock guys yeah. um, at school and we'd play rugby at half – at. Um, lunchtime at school, and I get lined out. Like, oh, would you? Yeah, because I could be a big boy though. I I'd wasn't be. that big. I was pretty skinny, and like oh, I was okay. trying to sight, and they they could tackle, you know. So yeah. they just flatten me. Yeah, but then I'd they'd kick it across, and I'd take a hanger of them on the wing or whatever. So 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it's interesting, interesting pathway. There wasn't many guys drafted before me. My brother got drafted in 08 as a rookie draft to Sydney. Okay. <clears throat> but Dealey said after one year, so I sort of realized how cutthroat the industry was because mm. he was like the next big thing to come out of Canberra. Like really? he was like, he won all the league best and fairest, AIS, all that. And for him to get cut after one year, I was like, holy shit. Like, this is a fucking business. Yeah. Like it's, you know. It's brutal once you get there. And I got really lucky. I got lucky in terms of the timing of the Giants coming into the system, mm. really. So they sort of, they moved me uh, at the end of year 11 and I moved up to Review in Sydney and um, finished my year 12 up there and went to boarding school up there, which was another rugby school. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And then ended up with a three-year deal at Sydney. So. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah. I was just thinking about it the other day and you'll know this list better than me, but the, the list of players that have come out of Canberra is actually quite impressive for such yeah, a sort of small is it james hurd hurdy jack Steele, J- Jez- jezelenko i think <laughs> alex jezelenko came from camera so. <laughs> yeah oh, he, pl- he definitely played in camera <laughs> okay we'll uh, claim him claim yeah, him because yeah. uh yeah, yeah. There, i was i was thinking um, about the other day i'm like that is, it's aaron with, hamill aaron hamill's a yeah, camera boy camera boy yeah so we, we bonded on that he's a great friend yeah. of mine aaron hamill yeah jack him. Steele, obviously the tom green he's currently playing oh, he's ripping it up um josh bruce josh bruce yeah um, just good battlers, you know. Yeah, so, good Aussie battlers. Yeah. The experience, um, obviously of your brother, which is pretty crazy to hear. I have no idea about that. Um, do you reckon that held you in good stead from a, a mental perspective coming in? It's like sort of everything's earned, not given, in a sense. If someone you saw to be of that nature getting sort of delisted or cut pretty quickly, it's real. Yeah, it was. I mean, it, it was. It sort of made me realize, yeah, a how cutthroat it is, but at the same time, like. You know, I had a lot to learn. Like mm. I was a pretty loose kid, pretty unprofessional, you know. Um, I've got traits that are, you know, are, are not conducive to being a professional athlete, you know. Mm. I can get a little bit crazy off the field and, you know, enjoy myself and, you know, I was pretty unorganised coming into it. So I was pretty lucky that I had the three-year deal because if I had been after my second season, I still remember some of my exit meetings with like <laughs> Choco and <laughs> Sheeds and these guys like and Leon like, because they were cutthroat. Like, as Stewie yeah. Edge, who's a coach at the Bulldogs now, I spoke to him about this the other day, and he he said, Matt, we had to make calls on guys so early. Like, we didn't even really have all the data. Like, we essentially had, had to make calls on guys. And I was lucky that I had that third year in my deal because I would have been out on my ass after two years, it, no doubt. Is that because they had just such a factory of talent coming in that Correct. it was just a churn yeah. and burn type so thing? So they just had, right, hey, you've got six, six months to make a call on this guy. Yeah. Either he's in or he's out. Like, we've got to make the call because we've got so many draft concessions. We can't afford to just, like, give guys list positions because there's just so many guys coming in and out. We've got so much availability of talent. And they made it work. Like, obviously, they were pretty strong for a long period of time there, the Giants. Yeah. What, what was it like in those early days? We had Tommy Bug talk about this, and he <clears throat> he kind of spoke of how fun it was as a kid, and it, it kind of felt like a – a big local footy club in a sense because it was so new, it was so fresh, everyone was so young. <laughs> yeah. Some of the, obviously the younger boys weren't as professional as probably what they should have been mm. because they didn't know necessarily. Yeah. Like he, he alluded to a story about him and Jezza Cameron absolutely loved temping bowling and they used to go <laughs> play at this local temping bowling place and they get two free games a day and then they built a relationship with someone there and Tommy Bugs fucking thinks he's a pro temping bowling player now. Thinks he's a pro at everything. Yeah, right. Guy. So <laughs> then he goes, they had a relationship with the person there and the, <clears throat> the guy goes, um, mate, if there's a free lane, you can play all day. So they used to play like 15 games of temping bowling a day and then they get, wake up the next day and like, fuck, my back is sore. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> just stuff like that. But the early days yeah. must have been pretty, oh, pretty mate, unreal there. It was crazy, yeah. Like looking back now, it was so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Like it was sick. Yeah. Like you're in this gated community <laughs> with like 40 18-year-olds and a couple of 21-year-olds <laughs> sprinkled in there, dude. That's a like joke. it was sick. Like <laughs> we'd have massive Nintendo 64 play. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Comps going to play Mario Kart, like it would get so heated. Like the pr- the pranks you'd play on, like guys, you'd like glad wrap their cars so they get up for training <laughs> the next day. The cars are fully glad wrap; they can't get oh, to training. Frankville, mate, and it was back. It was back in twenty eleven and twenty twelve when the cross was still pumping. Oh King's right, cross, yeah. So right, you'd have the nights out. Mate, well. the nights out was sick. We'd all get on the ferry together <laughs> from Brecky Point, head into the town, and go to the cross. And a like, few like, like we ended up getting in trouble a few. Nice. Yeah. Ended up getting a blanket ban on the cross. <laughs> oh no! Uh, yeah, it's probably a wise decision. Crazy. For the and then, uh, yeah, it was. And even on away trips, like those early doors, we had no idea about 
what it was what we were meant to do, right? So it was I still remember this story. It cost me a spot in the round one team for twenty twelve, actually. It was um <clears throat> we were away uh for the NAB Cup games back then. It was the third game of the thing against Hawthorne in Tassie. <laughs> Ended up going out to this place in Launceston, like yeah, you, know, mm. you know what it was like. Pretty rough joint. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, we had, we had a curfew of one, so we got home at you know twelve forty five. And a few of the lads were like, "Oh, I want to go back out. I want to <laughs> go back out." I'm like, "All right, no worries." So we ended up going back out. Me, Shawnee Edwards, Toby Grant, a few other lads, right? <laughs> ended up going back out till about three or four. Recovery was at seven a.m. End up rolling in the door, hammered, and then we <laughs> go to sleep. Next thing you know, I wake up. Miss the alarm at 7.15. I'm like, oh, oh no. no. Heart sinks. Heart sinks. Worst feeling in the world. I run downstairs. I've got my shorts on backwards. <laughs> I, lo- I look to my right. There's Toby Green. He's got black converses on. <laughs> <laughs> we go down to recovery, which is like down at the ovals and like feeling horrible. And I was like, oh, I felt really bad. So I started like doing the extra running with the guys who played like oh, no. half a game where I played <laughs> no, a full no. game. Anyway, so then um, essentially after that, got in trouble and I like said that I broke curfew. Toby said he didn't break curfew. Yeah. I got suspended. He didn't. So that oh, was like, wow. So that's the last time I ever told the truth. So. <laughs> yeah, lesson <laughs> learned. That's kind of what I – is it bad that my brain went there first? <laughs> yeah, oh, nah, I, so. yeah, it seemed like – look, it seemed like a lot of fun. And at, at the same time, even though it was a tough period on the field initially, it was kind of like um, – one of those bonding experiences because you're all so young, so talented going through it all together. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we were 17, 18. Like, we had no idea. Yeah, you don't I know. I didn't know. Like, I didn't know you weren't meant to get, like, yeah. we didn't know what professional standards were, you know. Yeah. It's funny. I, like, another good time I remember we, <clears throat> it was, like, the first season we got pumped by, I think it was Sydney. Um, it might have been Sydney the first week. So we got beaten by about 160 points, right? Yeah. Like, Hard. Like if we lost by like 80 points, that was considered a win, wow. right? Like in those early days, we're like, yeah, we're competitive today. Yeah. So we got pumped by Sydney, who were really good at the time. And then I remember we had these crisis meetings the whole week, like Chad Corns would be up there, just like, just not good enough, it's fucking bullshit. Like, blah, 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 <laughs> like just like drilling it. Oh, geez, you don't need that. Yeah, yeah. Next week versus Hawthorne, like reigning premiers. 165 points. <laughs> 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 was like, oh my God. <laughs> but like looking back now, it's like, if I'm a 31-year-old key position player and I'm coming up against 17, 18-year-olds, it's almost unsafe. Yeah. Like oh, a yeah. whole team of them. Yeah. Imagine them coming up against like Paul or against us. From that perspective. Like looking back now as an older player, it's crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah, because you, you probably had 80% of your list was yeah. first or second year players. Yeah, and even the older guys like Cal Warren and Phil Davis, who were a little bit more seasoned, they were only 20 or 21. Yeah. yeah, Phil Davis was still – I still put Phil Davis in your – he's still playing now. Like yeah, He's yeah, still yeah. in that bracket today. Yeah, exactly. And the older guys, you know, like Chad Corns, Luke Power and these sort of guys, there was only a sprinkle of them. There was only four or five of them playing. And then so. you guys were exposed experimenting like Israel Flower and stuff at the time yeah. and all that sort of stuff. It was yeah. pretty, yeah, it was just a weird, crazy, weird time. Yeah. When did you, was it when you went to St Kilda that you kind of felt like you belonged in the AFL or did you feel like you had form at the GWS where you're like, I belong here. I just, you know, maybe it's time to go somewhere else. Or- um, it's a how I think I remember having like a couple of games where I'd played quite well and I'd gone yeah, I reckon I can. I reckon I can make it at the level in terms of talent. Yeah, um, and always had really high work rate, um, really high drive. Like I'd always do extras and get my fitness up, and I was really strong from that point of view. So in yeah. terms of working hard and being a product of my hard work, that's sort of essentially how I made my career. You know, I'd always be doing more extras than anyone else, doing extra on like off the field in terms of my fitness stuff. Um, so. And, yeah, I just had a couple of games where I sort of felt like, all right, you know, yeah, I'm playing footy down back here at the Giants, but ideally I wanted to go to a a struggling Melbourne club where I could learn off some good key position players. And in the back of my mind, I always wanted to go back and play forward. Mm. So when when the Saints came to me, I thought, all right, sweet, we've got Sam Gilbert, we've got Sam Fisher down back who I can learn from, and then you've got Rui up forward. (laughs) So I was like, well, what better opportunity to go there and just I just literally latched myself onto Rui and onto those guys and just just did absolutely everything he did and more, you oh, know, wow. just to try and just to try and keep up with them. So 
Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, when I got to the Saints, had a couple of stinkers down back, um, like just turning the ball over. I remember there was a game in Geelong where I just kept turning the ball over inside 45, goal <laughs> against. <laughs> <laughs> Richo just got dragged me. He's like, you're an embarrassment to your family. Like, oh, no. Nah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> no <can't, can't. laughs> you go up forward, you're playing the rest of the game up forward and then got dropped and um, – to end that 2014 season, I had a game against Freo or something where I kicked maybe three goals and I was like, oh, I, can, I might be able to do this. Mm. And then I ended up having surgery on my shins in that off season, came back and worked my ring off for 2015 and ended up kicking 50. So then yeah, I was like, yeah. You've kicked some, you've kicked some huge numbers in, in seasons and in games in particular. Like you, you can kick a, like a 15 goal game. Like you have that capability. <laughs> like, so well, I think one of the games in Launceston was for the Saints, you, I don't know how many kicked by like three quarter time, but I was like, Jesus Christ, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, but just to, just to touch on that comment around, you know, latching yourself onto the experience plays at the Saints, what, what was it like working with Rui? Cause everyone always speaks about his standards and stuff, but particularly for you latching onto it, like, can you give us a bit of insight? Yeah, on that? it's interesting. Like, cause he was sort of in the latter stages of his career, mm. um, you know, in the twilight and he, you could see that he was visibly frustrated with where the club was at in terms of yeah. A, being at Seaford, in terms of the standards of the young playing group and just sort of like, because he'd been at the upper echelon of his career and, you know, there's famous stories of, of Rui when he was a bit younger and the highest end he had and even like at training sessions, like if you'd kick a ball at his feet, he'd yeah. just kick it away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't even get the I love that so, so much. He fucking kicks that. I love that <laughs> so, so much. Um, but... Yeah, his, I mean, in terms of, you know, he obviously saw something in me in terms of, you know, being a mentee to him um, and just at the club, I'd just latch on to everything he did and he was, he prepared better than almost anyone. Yeah, everyone says that. What, what, like, what was he doing? Because I know he was a big advocate for like doing these sort of extra kind of runs and like running himself in the ground. Yeah, it's interesting. Games. Like when I, they, they reckon that was the go when he was younger and mm -hmm. he would just go out and warm up for like three, four K in a warm up. And mm. I think a lot of that was mental intimidation. So it's in, like, he tells a story in 2008, I think it was when G train kicked, I might've been even earlier, 05, mm. G trains kicked 120 and Rui's ended up kicking 90 goals for the year. <sighs> and it was a different game, right? They wouldn't have, they had one-on-one -on -one players all day. So Rui would go, all right, I'm the best at one fifties to ever play the game of AFL, 150 mm. meter sprints. So I'll just sprint up to the wing and beat my man back to goal and just do it all day. Like imagine trying to go with Rui all day, same opponent. It's an Olympic sport. Yeah, literally. So they would just kick bags and bags and then obviously Clarkson brought in the team defense yeah. and handing over and like Taylor Duray at the Hawks recalls when they first started handing over and Rui and he would get so frustrated. <laughs> really? He'd be like, oh, what's going on? Like, it, you sh used to being on the same guy. Like they just explosion. hand him over. Yeah. So yeah. he's playing on two or three guys. But, I mean, you know, credit to him. You'd adapted him. He still kicked. He was still, you know, three or four time BNF after that and all yeah. Australian and all. So, but yeah, in terms of prep stuff, he wasn't running that much when I got to the club. Like he was. He was getting his knee drained and stuff yeah, like drained before every game. Out, like, yeah. It was like, pretty sweet. Yeah. That's yeah, what I was and like. And he mate. wouldn't run till mid Jan. Okay. So he'd just be smashing the bike. Like yeah. some of the things I was sending him doing a what bike. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. God. Just go bananas. And then he'd just be on the side doing like 150s and just running. And then he'd come out in the first NAB Cup game and just dominate. You're like, yeah. fuck, this guy's gone. Yeah. So you probably get a sense of it now when you get older. You kind of know your body, don't you? Like yeah. you know what it needs. Yeah. Which as a young player, you're just like, mate, what the? Like you're, you're yeah. doing everything. You don't know what you're doing. You're exactly. doing not enough. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a bit, bit um, crazy. Uh, be, being a Saints fan, I know there'll be some Saints fans. Uh, watching along, like how how was your overall time in St Kilda? Because for me, overall, there was periods there where you seemed like you were loving life and you're a big part of the the team. And it was a a team that was a little bit up and down at times, but at at the same time, it always kept hope um, at a footy club where there's not been a lot for for some time as well. Yeah, I mean, I look back at my time at Saints and I loved it. Like, yeah. yeah, it was great. We had a good group of young guys. We've got lifelong friends, guys that have all been to my wedding, yeah. been to their weddings. You know, we had we had a really good time. It was obviously some challenging times on the field. There was a couple of years where it felt like we were in the going in the right direction. It felt mm. like, you know, there was that year where Robbie Gray kicked that goal oh. to knock us out of finals. Yeah, that essentially, hurt. you know, that that hurt. That was like, <laughs> yeah. that hurt bad. It was yeah. like far out. You know, we're going to play finals. This yeah. club's been starved of success for a while. And I was, I've bought in massively to the club. Like I loved it. I re-signed there. 
and I had, I could have signed elsewhere for way more money. You know, yeah. I could have gone over to to WA. I stayed at the Saints and really enjoyed my time there. And then obviously, um, you know, by the end of 2019, I had a family. Mm. You know, they were sort of mucking around a little bit with the contract side of things, and the dogs offered me four years, and I just could, I couldn't say no. No, really. you, that's so. yeah, it's hard because. Some people don't really know that too, of that side of the business. Like they'll think, oh, this is, see Josh Bruce has gone to the Bulldogs and da da da. But like people don't understand the actual depth of, that's a life decision. It's yeah. not so much just a football decision. Exactly anymore. right. And that's sort of what plays into it. And, you know, everyone, you know, footy clubs are interesting. It's like everybody they scream, you know, everyone's like, you've got to be loyal. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. But it's, you know, at the end of the day, you're a commodity to the footy club, yeah. right? And if you're not valuable to them, they'll, fuck you off. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. So it's important to stay valuable and stay a commodity. And, um, you know, I, we approached the Saints and said, well, you know, how do you feel about me extending? I think I'll kick 40 that year or something. And they go, oh, we want to see like how he comes back in preseason if he comes back fit. And I was like, of course I'm going to come back fit. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> so it was just one of those ones. Like my hands were essentially tired. It was <sighs> like, well, what are you going to do? I've got a daughter and you know, with two kids. Um, so, yeah. Well, just before we go on to the Bulldogs and that, that move in itself, because I actually know just on that, I know that um, it was tough for you leaving the Saints, even though it was a, a family decision and obviously a career decision. Like that was a place you had a lot of great mates if you, you've just touched on. You lived a you know big part of your adulthood um, going out there at Seaford. And were you, were you there when we were at Moorabbin? Yeah, I moved to Moorabbin. Yeah, yeah, so that that period. So you got accustomed to it. So that wouldn't have been easy as well. Nah. Like I, I tested with Adam Trelaw. Like he got invested at Collingwood mm. and then that moved to the Bulldogs. Like it's 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 tough because you got a lot of mates. You invested with the fans, the culture. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it was really tough. I loved the Saints fans and I loved meeting at Moorabbin. I lived five minutes around the corner. Yeah. You know, it was tough. It yeah. certainly was. Was, you know, I played 99 games there too. Oh, no. So I was one game away from getting my name on the locker, oh. which is like something that as a young player, you look at the names on the locker and you go, fuck. Every day. You go, fuck, I'd love to be on that locker one day. And to be one game away from it, sort of, that was almost a reason not to leave. Yeah, yeah. Literally. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was played on my mind more than anything else. You oh. know, just to be, just to have that legacy after you finish, you know. But at the end of the day, my hands were sort of tired, so. Hey legends, just a quick break in this episode to thank our partners, Dabble, the gambling agency, where you dabble socially and gamble responsibly. Please only bet what you can and are willing to lose. Now, Dabble is one of the great platforms out there. I absolutely love using it. Very similar to Instagram where you can follow some of the head honchos in the different sports, copy their bets and get some good wins on the board. Now, Fortunately for me, I've been working with Dabble for over a year. This year, we are doing a stream every Tuesday night. It's called Jake's Take. It's from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. where you can go in the Dabble app. You can join me. We get guests on every week. We bet on the dogs. We have an absolute ball, and they're talking about sport and cutting up the shop around what's going around town across all codes. So come on down, check it out. Dabble socially, gamble responsibly, and let's get back into the episode. Moving over to the doggies, you, you obviously moved to a, a club that is just stacked with talent and just is constantly exciting, but there's also a lot of expectation as well. And on the back of the grand final win they would have had, you'd kind of still come into a team that had tasted some success. What was sort of the initial feelings for you when you were kind of walking through those doors um, a couple of years ago now? Yeah, I mean, it was 2020, obviously, so... Uh end of 2019 it was exciting I mean I wasn't in the best shape um probably I had on my wedding that off season so I let myself go a little <laughs> yeah. bit um and I came into the summer not in the best shape but you know pre-season happened and then we obviously heard about this virus that was sort of yeah. coming out of nowhere <clears throat> so it was my first year at the club it was really hard to get to know people in terms of that because we started getting separated into small groups oh, God. and then we had like a three-month hiatus in from about March till July. So we didn't know whether we were going to play that year and all this. So I, I ended up going back home with my family for a bit. Um, had a bit of an injury. You know, I found it really hard to train. found it really hard to be motivated. You know, I wasn't really sure what was going on. Um, and then obviously came back and we moved up to Queensland. So I moved up to Queensland in the hubs in my first year. Found it really challenging up there, but like, you know, um, was sort of, as, as everyone knows, probably wasn't in the best shape. I played some okay games. I think I kicked six in one of the games, as you said, like I can kick Is this, So th this year you guys made the grand final, right? Ne well, the next year. The yeah. next year you did, right. Yeah. So we were up there, you know, as you said, I can always sort of 
kick a bag somehow. Yeah, you d- you've got it. Yeah, that's the thing that you never like. You can't. Yeah, that's, I think that's a good thing to have. Yeah, it's like it's, a joker card. It's I've like, always I been could, able to do that. Yeah. yeah, even as a kid, it's like <laughs> yeah. I'll just stink it up one week, and then the next week I'll just do some freakish. But then stuff. that's why, like, a, that's why if you're a backman going on you when you're obviously in your forward days, you you kind of always have to give you respect, yeah. <laughs> even if you have a bad quarter or something. You're like, well, you could kick six in a quarter. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I said I had that weird X factor. So. Yeah. yeah, I will reveal a source that. Gave me a bit of insight, Adam Trelaw. <laughs> He's uh, a good yeah. man, Adzi. Yeah. Um, yeah. Know Adam quite well. But and one thing he actually said to me is like to speak on the COVID year with you because um, obviously you have a, a pretty young family too. Yeah. And that other side of the game was probably players in the AFL. And I spoke to Luke Shui about this, copped a bit of stick, like wanting to be with the family and, you know, not accepting that they're upper echelon on these pay packets and they shouldn't, they should be isolated like everyone. Like, yeah. That, that you guys can't have the simple things in life as such, but just as a player and as a person, was that, was that really difficult or was it something of that you may have enjoyed just kind of something different from an AFL perspective? Um, yeah. I mean, it was challenging. I mean, especially 20, like 2020 in the hub was tough because yeah. we were just living and breathing footy. Like you'd go to training with, you know, 10 coaches and 40 guys, you'd go and eat together, you'd sleep together, you'd be in the lift, you'd see five other teams and you just like, the walls were closing in, like, <laughs> I was going crazy. Yeah, I can like, imagine that. F- fucking crazy. <laughs> and um, and then we ended up having Augie, my second son, so my wife was pregnant up there as well, we ended up having him in the bye between the finals before the Saints game. So oh yeah, God. Gears actually, Darren Geary had his son on the same day, essentially, on that finals by weekend. Yeah, so we Jeez. left the hub, had the baby, set the newborn baby, then played my first final against my old team. Oh, so, and the Saints got up that day Yeah, so. they did, yeah. So yeah. that was pretty crazy. It was a whirlwind. And then, um, you know, the end of that season, I was filthy on the year I had. Like, I was – it was burning me inside, so – well, um, if, Just to touch on that, though, that this is what's commendable, is the next year, the 2021 yeah. season – was was arguably probably one of your your best seasons in your career. Yeah, right? I, up up until oh, because you, what did you? How many did you kick? Forty. Yeah, I think I kicked fifty or forty nine. You, you, yeah. you kicked just under fifty, but you only played twenty games. Yeah, yeah. So I was second in the Coleman, I think when it was Harry Mackay kicked like fifty five or something yeah, like that. He won it yeah, that year. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was I had spent a huge off season just getting super fit. I worked with Jack Steele and I got a PT and just trimmed down, lost four or five kilos and just got crazy fit. Um, did a lot of work on the mental side of it, um, just rejigging all that sort of stuff. And, yeah, I had a really strong season. Yeah. Because you know, there's one thing that uh, I've always prided myself on and it's something that's just been able to prove people wrong. So mm. it's like, you know, it's it's not something that lasts forever in terms of inspiration, but it's good for a short burst of inspiration. You know, ever since I was a kid, I've had people tell me I'm not good enough or yeah. that I'm lazy or, you know, and I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. I'm going to prove you wrong. And that's how I felt after 2020. I was like, I essentially felt like I'd embarrass myself. Um, and I wanted to to change that perception. And yeah, I felt like I did that, but your footy's a cruel mistress. And wow. uh, yeah, then the ACL. It was the, all for nothing. The, the, yeah. The, <laughs> it's like speaking of Voldemort. It's like, you don't even want to mention the injury, bro, because it's, it's such a, spoken about ACLs before, Kelsey Brown, one of them, um, I think her sister as well, Maddie Brown, we had them, they both had them. Um, and like I've seen players have them in um, from a soccer perspective, been fortunate enough to never have them. But I always say ACL injuries uh, are life changing. They're, they're not. It's not just a sports injury; it's a life changing injury because everything for that next twelve months is different. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it was fuck. It was hard, man. Yeah. Hard, hard. Yeah, I go looking back, like because the boys, you know, obviously it was having such a strong year. It was such a strong component of that team. It was clicking nicely. Um, it was against Essendon. It was a 150th game, had no crowd there, no nothing. Mm. And as soon as it happened, I knew, I knew straight away. And I was just, I was, oh mate, I was in absolute inconsolable in the room. It's yeah. like just fucking inconsolable. Cause you'd given so much that probably preseason and dedicated yeah. so much of your life to footy, probably for the last year and a half from the, yeah. from the hub to the preseason exactly. to your form on the field. And it sort of felt like, it felt like everything that I had sacrificed for, 12 years yeah. was culminating to this to this point in time. I felt like, all right, we're going to be playing finals. I'm playing good footy. We're in a good bloody team. The mm. team ended up making a granny and was 18 points up in the third quarter. I was, I like, I was like, this is this is the year. <laughs> I was like, this is the year for me. Yeah. And then I just, oh, man, it was fucked. Yeah, footy's a cool game. Just, just uh, we're not to harp on the, 
the lows because I, abs- I actually love the Bulldogs. I love watching them. I have for the last few years, like probably most people, but just missing that grand final uh, and watching it uh, must have been tough, even though it was a bit of a unique space with the hub and playing it in WA and so forth. And obviously Melbourne were pretty, a pretty strong team throughout. Mm. But just that, that missing something so big at, at that point in your career, I can imagine would have been. Yeah, it was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. Like I... You know, as I said, I felt like I'd sacrificed so much for for very little on field success in terms of team success, and I was in as at a time where you know I felt like the team was pointing in the right direction for that. Um, I had to have surgery and stay in Melbourne, so I couldn't travel with the team because mm. of COVID. So I ended up being down back here on my own, <laughs> watching you know it's the so boys weird, the boys it? play finals off from my couch. Yeah, you know just. After kicking almost 50, 50 for him yeah, to help him like get in a position. Just sitting there with a, with my knee in pieces, like killing me from surgery, just watching the boys win yeah. after win after win. It was fucking I hard. wish I wish people yeah. could like, I wish fans could see that. I know it sounds stupid, yeah. but like a split screen of like, yeah, you've just kicked six in a game against someone, how good sport, and then you're on the couch watching the grand final yeah. with your knee busted. And I'm like, that's, that's why like I take personal some of the stuff you said about like death threats and stuff. It's like, mate, that's the – you've put your body to that point of no repair for that club at times and you, and, and or for, for the game in itself and you're still copping hate, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's funny. I can't, like, I can't stand that. Like one of the messages from one of the guys is like, he's sent like a, like a death threat message or like a, you know, you're a piece of shit or whatever. The last message he sent me was when I did my knee. Oh. And he said, chin up, mate. Like, <laughs> you've been really good for us. Yeah, this is Thank like- <laughs> you. Like, I was like, I didn't reply, but I was like, you fucking serious? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. This is what- Have th- a look at what you said before, you flog. Okay. Yeah, I know. Anyway. Well, I think at, sure, at probably at 30, are. see, 31, you can handle it well. You can have a joke about it. But at, at 22, 21, oh. mate, I, I'd be inconsolable. Yeah, that. Like, yeah, I'd yeah. be thinking like, well, where's that bloke live? Or like, how, what do I do? Exactly. Yeah, do you know like, what I mean? When like, I was younger, that used to rattle me. Yeah. yeah, like I would like when I was even when I was playing good footy at the Saints, I still wasn't didn't quite believe that I was. Yeah, I sort of felt like I was a bit of a fraud, like yeah. faking it a bit. Yeah, I was like, "Fuck, I'm fluking this. Like, I'm just kicking. <laughs> I'm, I'm, ki- I'm just kicking I'm bags just kick out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. like fluke. I was like, and then like, so I'd read everything that would said about yeah. me, and I was drinking I'd my used bath to, I used to be like, like, "Fuck, these articles are so positive. Like, people are frothing. Like, I was like, this is awesome. And mm. then like, started to have a bit of a dip in form, and like, you start reading all of that, and then I was just like, you know what? Mm. This is bad. Yeah, like, and as as we spoke about before about tying your worth to the way that you're playing. I you know, that's that. when yeah. I had to separate it. I was like, yeah. Yeah. That was part of my demise as a soccer player is my worth was always, is only on the soccer field. Mm. I had no worth anywhere else. Exactly. So if I played well, fuck, I was a great bloke to be around. If I played bad, like speak to my old man, it's like I wouldn't pick up the phone. Yeah, or if yeah, I did, yeah, like yeah. he's famous for telling me I was one word answers. Yeah, He yeah, goes, yeah. mate, you are a fucking prick to deal with. Yeah. It's like, I'm sorry. It's, really, it's, just, it's just part of, you know, maturing and growing up and – I guess now that we're becoming so much more aware of mm. the mental side of the game, you know, yeah. of how, uh, how you can sort of learn these things rather than just having to, to go through it yourself. So, yeah, yeah. interesting. How, how um, I'll, so the list of the Bulldogs I have to touch on, and it's obviously had some changes over the years, but um, players have come in, players have gone, but the crux of like the brilliance of that team, it's so deep, particularly in the midfield. Now you've got obviously a young up and coming forward line, um, you got a few players, um, you know, picked up in the trade period down back playing with you. Like, is it, is it one of the best teams you've ever been able to run around in? Is it an exciting team to be in at the moment? And I guess ever since you've joined? Yeah, abso- absolutely. I think that 2021 team, that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like we had Steph Martin playing really good footy in the rock. Adzi came over, Adzi Trelaw. We obviously had the midfield was humming. Yeah. Then we had me and, and Naughty and Tim English was playing third tall. Jesus. So, you know, and he was swapping through the ruck. We won like 10 or 11 in a row. It was the first time in my career. It was like you rocked up. You knew you were going to win. Oh, that's a, that's a great feeling, It was it? sick. Yeah. yeah. Like it was unreal. There was a game against Gold Coast. I think it was like 80 to nil at halftime. <laughs> like yeah. 80 to 3 or something and like, that's like a, it's, you're not even surprised yeah. when you're yeah, there like, and that's and a great none of the place forwards, to be none of the forwards really kick goals and Miz were just bombing them over our heads for yeah. goals like it was sick like it was really cool um, you know a really special time this the, the team this year is really well balanced I reckon if we can get all our good players on the field we've got Jack, like obviously JJ's injured at the moment Ed Richards mm. injured at the moment they're really integral parts to our back line I reckon if we can get all our best 22 
in form, like we can challenge for and sure. This is what I wanted to ask you just in your view of how the season's stacking up because particularly you know, when this episode comes out, it'll probably be a week or two um, ahead. So things could change very quickly in footy, but you guys have played some pretty formidable teams the last few weeks and been really close as well. So it's like almost those losses that hurt the most because you actually – kind of with these teams that are sort of seen at the top top end of the table. How, how's that sort of been kind of coping? Cause yeah, it's been tough. I mean, obviously Gold Coast in Darwin yeah, that was tough. tough one. And they had back-to-back fixtures in Darwin, yeah, which is a pretty crazy the, advantage. The elite record in Darwin too, Gold Coast. Yeah. That's a little much. smoky little thing up the, up the I've back. I've never seen back-to-back fixtures. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Have I think you? They've been saying, well, I don't know. No, I mean. Like in a way like that? Like, <laughs> oh, that <laughs> Look at the confusion in his face. So, okay. <laughs> let's, let's, let's acclimatize for three days, yeah. play a game, then stay another week <laughs> and then play another good team. <laughs> yeah. Dodgy. Dodgy. Anyway. Dodgy, we uh, like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but credit to them, they're good, the Gold Coast. And yeah, then obviously yeah. the boys probably let one slip against Geelong, it felt like. And then even on the weekend against Port, like we, we could have beaten Port. Yeah, that's if what I, I genuinely I, believe. If I didn't get five kicked on me, we probably would have been. Yeah, but then you guys also <laughs> kicked it. You guys also kicked a, a lot of behinds early because yeah. Port, Port, let, Port um, kicked a lot of behinds too. So they kind of kept you guys in the game. Yeah. And then you guys started playing. It was, it was actually a really good game of footy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really so, enjoyed watching it. Yeah, I definitely. Th- and I think it's been, a, it's been a big start of the year. Like we went to Adelaide, gather around, and mm. we went straight to Freo, came back, we've been to Darwin. And it's around 13, 14, 15. We haven't had a buy yet. Yeah. So we're playing all these teams after a trip to Darwin. The boys, you know, it's tough. rightly or wrongly, are starting to run on fumes and l- looking like they need a week off. And we got um, North this week who are refreshed and challenging as well. Yeah. So that'll be Correct. a tough game on Sunday. And then we've got a week off. And then hopefully we can just push really hard for September after that. And got a reason, like I don't want to, you know, crystal ball, but got a reasonably – Nice run home in terms of playing, you know, top four teams. Haven't got many of those. Oh, until, that's good. Until we play Geelong in round twenty four down in down at the Cattery. So hopefully we can get them back. Make amends yeah. down there. There's been some hard days down there. <laughs> oh, I imagine Gary man. Rowan after the siren. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no PTSD he, over here. He munged it too. <laughs> he c- come off his absolute phalanx. Yeah, he just kicked it like. And then just hooped it back in. He's one of those players, Gary Rowan. He's just a bit freakish, isn't he? Yeah. He's a bit frustrating player yeah. to play against. And then we had another one. We were up by 10 at half time, 10 goals at half time. Yeah. Last year, I think. I got, speak to a couple down. of the um, old Collingwood boys when they were at their peak, sort of that 2010 period, maybe just around the time you joined the AFL. Um, they always talk about how they hated playing at Geelong because that was when Geelong had like five or six they or don't seven. Play at Geelong. Or, oh yeah, they play. Yeah, they play the CG <laughs> home games. <laughs> yeah, true. Big, like the big clubs. <laughs> I saw some stats the other day. Since like 1995, Collingwood have played in Geelong three times. <laughs> oh, that's outstanding. In and like, like 25 the games Geelong, years. As they meant. Oh, that's yeah, that's a win. Like we've played there 19 times. We play there every year. That's probably because it's a revenue opportunity for the Cats too. Massive. Yeah. Yeah. So they come up. That is the reason. Of course. Yeah. yeah. They come up and play the big games of the G, which is fine. It makes sense. It's just it's a big. Perks are getting a big club. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love being at one of the underdog clubs there. Yeah. Well, yeah. And this is the, what's beauty about the Bulldogs. You guys kind of punch above your weight in that sense. Yeah. Because like, like I want to talk about uh, Bonton Pally. Like he, you played with some great players. Obviously you mentioned Rewalt. Um, you played with Jackie Steele probably as he was on the come up and catching eyes. Obviously, Jack Sinclair as well. But Bonton Pally, like, where does he stack up in your experiences with and against players in the AFL? Because he oh. was like, he, he, some of the stuff he did on the weekend against Port, I was like, fuck, Mate, he's, he's so good. He's, <laughs> he's a freak. Yeah. Like, but he's not, it's not a freak as in, like, where does that come from? And it's like, you, if you saw behind closed doors what that guy does to prepare his body and prepare his mind. It's no surprise that he's ready to take the big moments when they come Yeah, because he's prepared for it. Yeah, He's prepared for it for years and years and years. So like, you know, I played with guys, you know, I played with Lenny Hayes, Lee Montagna, these guys at the very tail end of their career and obviously Rui, but there's no, there's no player that I've been with in terms of pure footballing ability like Bond. He's just a machine. Like yeah. he's... Is he but, as tall? Is he a bit smaller than you? Yeah, 194 he is. He's so tall yeah, as well. So I'm, he's tall. He's a modern prototype. But I think... I think those outside guys wouldn't look anywhere near as good if they didn't have Libba feeding it out to them. Yeah, and, and this is the other thing. Like, I think he's like, the most underrated player. You should in your see team. the plaudits he gets from the inside the four he walls. Could. Like some of his contested footy 
dishing handballs out that just has no right to hit a target and just laces them out. Like no discredit to the outside players, but Lib is incredible. But yeah, Bont, mate. Yeah. Incredible. The, well, yeah, because I think Bont get, does get the accept. But I mean, Lib is, I mean, he's won a few BNFs and so forth, hasn't he? Like he's. Yeah. Oh, second a couple. He's second, won one. He's and won second, one. And he's been second for like the last three years. Yeah. yeah. yeah his, his battle with Zach Butters, like that was, that was, one yeah. of, that, was that was good. Yeah. I love that. I love yeah. how he still chirps at people. He's the best. Um, Just trying to go into uh, your sort of role this year. And obviously you, you kind of have had periods down the back, back before. So it's not unbeknown to you, but. Um, when did that sort of conversation happen? How did that happen that you know, maybe this is a role that we'll look at on a more permanent basis going forward? Yeah, well, it's, it's sort of, you know, the way that I came back from my knee last year, I felt like I'd never played the game before. You know, yeah. I played 150 games. I felt, you know, like so out of my depth. It was really weird coming back and trying to play footy again. Um, and I, I knew we were going to get Rory Lobb across, right? And it's funny when it's funny when you're in the AFL and you know you're going to go to another club and you play that team <laughs> and you fucking dominate. Right? Oh, right. So Lobby had this game against us when he's played for Freo. He was dobbing them from 60 out under the dome, like oh. on the boundaries, kicking everything. And that was the game I was like, all right, <laughs> we're gonna get we're gonna get this guy. Did you tap them on the shoulder? Yeah, Is that, that what you led to? No, I did. Yeah. In, in, oh my god. Yeah, literally in my exit meeting, I thought. I'm pragmatic, right? I've always, you know, wanted Good. to stay in the system as long as I can. I'm not going to beat my head up against a wall and think that, you know, you've got a new toy on the block and Rory's a good player and he does really good things in the ruck and I wasn't playing my best footy. So I just thought, I, I just approached him. I said, look, how do you, I didn't, I didn't know if we we're going to get Jonesy or not, but I felt like the defensive um, key position was probably the spot I was going to be able to get a spot because we have got Naughty who is unmovable. Mara, who's unmovable, and then you're going to get Rory in, right? So I was thinking, you know what? I'm just going to bite the bullet here. I'm just going to be more versatile, and, you know, that might prolong my chances of staying in the league. Mate, that's commendable. That's like take, take your ego out of it. Yeah, and, and, massively. And yeah. a lot, not many people can do that, though. Yeah, well, it's like, you know. <clears throat> I, yeah, I don't, I'd, I'd struggle to do something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, I just love playing the game. Like, yeah. You know, because it is an ego driven, like professional sports, it's very ego driven. It is. Massively. You need it to be yeah. at your best, and but sometimes to remove it, you need to take the heat and out. It's of funny, things. like people ask me because you know, obviously, I had a really strong summer down back, and I was in the team for the first five weeks, and they sort of just go, "Oh, what's what's the difference between back and forward? Like, how does it feel?" And I was like, "Well, it's weird when you play forward, the highs are like high. Mm. You feel like you kick a goal, you take a sick mark. It feels unbelievable." Whereas you don't get that in the back line. It's really yeah. like level the yeah. whole time. But when you win, it almost feels better. Yeah. Like you feel like you really earned the win as yeah. a back six. Yeah. Like it's it's kind of cool. It's a cool way to. It's culty. It it's is. It's a bit culty. Yeah. yeah. I see the slaps on the bums yeah, and like yeah, the kisses yeah. on the cheek and oh, stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a bit of that. It's a bit like what I attest to soccer as well. Like a goalkeeper, you save it. That's your job. You, if you miss it, you've cost your team. <laughs> yeah. That's the harsh part about yeah, playing like I'd have, footy. I would have had equally as poor games as I had on the weekend as a forward and nothing would have come of it. Back yeah. Because I'm in the back line. Yeah, it's it's goals like, against. You, yeah, you, but it's like, that's, shit, this but is crazy. That's what they focus on. That's, yeah. why it's, um, that's why it's a tough place to play. But do you, do you enjoy it? You mean yeah. enjoying the challenge? Yeah, I am, yeah. It's yeah. been really refreshing for me mentally, especially over summer. Yeah. Um, you know, playing the same position, doing the same thing for, for such a long period of time. You know, yeah. especially considering as we just spoke about, you know, some of the the low points of it, um, in terms of, you know, twenty twenty one, and then obviously coming back and you know, obviously finding my feet again with my knee. Um, yeah, it's been it's been really refreshing, and obviously, you know, I can go back and play forward anytime I wanted to. Yeah, I could just be like riding a bike. So, yeah, you know, if an injury popped up or whatever, you've got you know, that versus. I've got that versatility to go back. So, um, but yeah. How is it? Um, I want to grab a bit of insight just on the coach Bevo. He seems like from the outside a pretty serious, serious bloke, but at the same time he's been able to get success in a in a club. And it always seems like, as I said, it's such an exciting list that they've stuck with Bevo and continue to show forms, uh, signs of you know positivity as such. But what's he like for for you? Yeah, he's great. I mean, obviously when you first come over, they're your best mate. Like, mm -hmm. You know, because they they want to get you to the club and they. Um, and he's, he's so, he's very laid back, um, in terms of off the field, he's a great relationship coach. Um, yeah. and he serves and stuff, but all sort of head coaches are a little bit like, 
Yeah. You know, especially <laughs> after time in the game, they all get a little bit like, <laughs> it's ch- it's hard, man. I think it's the hardest. It's thing. the hardest job in, yeah. I reckon, in sport. Like yeah. you look at, you look at what's happening now, you know, you got coaches that are t- taking mental health breaks, you know, yeah. Alistair Clarkson, you know, the, the stress, Hardwick, the yeah. stress that these guys are under, like they're not just managing like your players, your selections and all of that. They're involved in everything at the club. Like mm. they're involved in list management meetings. They're involved in meetings about the redevelopment. They're involved in this. They're involved in, they've got to front the media every week. Like, yeah. Sometimes I think they need the most help, like mentally in, in regards mate. to like just ba- life balance. Massively. Cause yeah, yeah, you can be so over the top. Like I, I actually think what Damien Harvey did this year and I don't know the full extent of Clarko's to, to really talk on, but like, Calling it when you're ready. Massive. It's fucking awesome. Because yeah. it Jose Mourinho spoke to uh, one of these former Frank Lampard, and I always talk about soccer, but it's because I know a bit. I love it. He spoke about he spoke to Frank Lampard when he got sacked. He goes, Now you're a coach. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like they're yeah, welcome to the industry. Like yeah, it's just yeah, fucking yeah. this is it, bro. Yeah, dude. You win some trophies, but you get sacked. Like yeah. it's part of it. So Yeah, caretaker. Yeah, it's a t- <laughs> caretaker. Yeah. yeah, fuck me that. God. Uh, it's a it's a tough place to be. But um I want to finish with a few few fun ones because um We've done these a few times. I know some of the listeners at home love them. So I reckon Joshy Bruce, you'll have a will have a few good ones here. So we'll go we'll go with what we've got. <laughs> but toughest opponent you've ever matched up against, or someone that you just find that doesn't necessarily mean the best player, but just like uh, someone's given you trouble over time. The hardest one I ever came up against was Alex Rance in his heyday. Oh, that's a good one, dude. He was Arguably the best fullback of all time. Crazy, yeah. right? Like. They obviously had really good system, really good pressure. But normally I'd go into a game as a forward and go, all right, this guy's playing on me. I can probably jump better than him. I'm either faster than him. You know, I can, you know, use some sort of physical attribute. I'm stronger than him, whatever it was. He was better than me at everything. Yeah. Like stronger, faster, quicker, better jump. Like unbelievable. It just – he – Absolutely boxed me a special. few times. Yeah, yeah and special he, player. And then I love the fact that he just kind of walked away. Yeah, after he's just, like, ah, yeah, yeah, fuck it. Like well, another ACL. Like apparently his yeah. knee didn't feel. Well, there you go. Right afterwards, so. it's commendable. It's again, the ACL. It's life changing, man. And yeah. you know what you actually said just on that? It's like when you came back. This is the other side of the ACL. I forgot. It's like. You, f- you forget how to run again and stuff. Dude, it's crazy. Not let, let alone Jumping, kick a footy at high intensity yeah. on the MCG in front of 80,000. It's like, I can't yeah. even run up the road. Yeah. Like, what do I do? Yeah. Yeah. It's wild how, like, if you ever, if you ever want to watch something pretty di- cr- crazy, watch a video of, like, um, the surgery. Yeah. Like, on YouTube. Someone's They're like that. carpenters, mate. They're yeah. Just, fuck. Bang. 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 And you didn't need that stuff. <laughs> Mate, it's sickening. They're like stretching your knee out oh. and then you wake up and you're like, ah, what the fuck did they just do to me? It takes six months to get over the bloody bone oh, bruising. Oh, that was oh, great. I feel man. like I just watched it. <laughs> um, all right. If someone was to take a set shot for your life, who are you giving it to? Uh, outside of Josh Bruce. Ah, uh, who? That's, I reckon Jack McCray. Jack McCray. I love the Smokies. Yeah, he is a cool Is customer. he a dead eye dick? Is he? He's just like, he's got this weird inner confidence that, like, it, it tra- it's funny. At training, like, we're doing set shot practice, he'll celebrate before he kicks. <laughs> so he'll be like walking down, he'll be like, come on. And then kick it. <laughs> and then be like, yeah. come on. So, yeah, uh, probably him. He's because he doesn't get, he's unflappable. Yeah. All right. Love that. Um, Let's go best player you've played with, and you can. I'll give you maybe a list of three because it's pretty hard to narrate for one, maybe. Yeah. But if you've got one. Uh, yeah. I reckon uh, Rui, Bont, and Libba. Yeah. Wow. Love that. Libba, that's high praise. Yeah. yeah him, mate. He's, if, yeah. he, if he's the kind of player that you just. Is it, it's one of those ones. I mean, I think he gets external portals, but when you play with him, you, you just yeah. love you one of those And you what guys. he does for the team in terms of how much pressure he puts on, like just the little things that you just don't really see on TV. Like right. he is just, if you ever get a chance to, if kids out there are listening to this and you're playing midfield, you should watch Tom yeah. Vittore footage of what he does in clinches because that is how you're going to make it. Uh, last one to round it out. The listeners will know what this one is, but we're th- we test sort of three key traits to success, sport, life, business, whatever it may be. Yours probably pretty evident with some of the things you've had to come over, but out of resilience, driver, ambition, all three are important, but which one sort of resonates for you at 31 to sort of help you get to where you've, where you've got to? Uh, resilience, driver, ambition. 
Mm. It's, a, it's a tough question. Uh, I reckon drive. Drive. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I reckon if you got if you got the up and go and the ability to get up out of bed every morning and be driven to succeed, then shit's going to happen for you. Yeah. Like just the harder you work, the luckier you get. It's been sort of a motto for me. So, um, yeah, and then obviously the other ones are important too, but, yeah, I reckon that's the, the integral cog. Uh, beautiful Joshy Bruce mate I love you love how you go about it love you as a bloke my dad loves you more apparently so yes, I appreciate you coming on the show we wish you all the best for the rest of the year mate thank you mate appreciate it Thanks absolute pleasure me. guys we'll see you next week thank you for tuning in